they'd sneak in and move the cameras and the wire. They, uh, you know, um, here's another really weird story. Uh, there was a time where we're in the room, and and I walk over to the clothes rack and I grab something and I feel this heart beating, boom, 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 boom. like it's afraid because I'm there grabbing it and and I'm like, there's something here, someone here, and, and I feel it plain as day, boom, 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 and I grab this fucking knife I have and I'm like. Ah, ah, and this knife will not go through anything. It won't go through the clothes. It won't go through whatever's there. It, it's just hitting it and bouncing off. And like, I keep it sharp, you know, like a razor. Um, it was weird, you know, and, and, and I don't even want to get into it. You know, there were so many times in the room, we'd be in the room and doing our thing and like somebody would bop you on the back of the head or throw something at you and you know I would have these mirrors in front of me trying to look behind me or I would have the video cameras running behind me to try to see where is this coming from I'm getting bopped on the back of the head either there's somebody in the room that's invisible or they're using some kind of energy weapon or they're using this dust to bop shit around there were times where they knocked me unconscious with the sleeping gas slash ray whatever bonk, and I would wake up to this feeling of being bam in the top of the head like like somebody had punched me or hit me in the head with a metal bar and I would see stars ah, and I'd wake up, you know, in my head. By this time I had all these sores and, and bug bites and, and soft places in my head. Um, the weird thing is there was, you know, besides the stuff shooting out of our heads and the mind control and the whole thing with the aliens, you know, I, I don't know whether that was real or not. At, at first, I took the view that this can't be real. You know, come on, they're trying to fool me. They put me on MK Ultra drugs, and they're showing me aliens. And, um, but these bugs that we had, um, they had gotten into me. And there was a time where literally, if you looked... You know, if you looked at my my veins, you would see in every vein these little bugs with the little red eyes and the nose and the mouth, these glowing red eyes, little tiny round red eyes, nose and a mouth. And Petra saw them, and I had them all in my body. You could see them in every pore. And uh, my theory is that this is some kind of, um, excuse me while I get some water. My theory is that this is some kind of uh, parasite, a symbiotic parasite. I think along the lines of toxoplasmosis. For those of you, for those of you who don't know, toxoplasmosis is a, uh, a virus, I believe, a parasitic virus that um, lives in cats carry it and it's in their feces and something like you know 80 or 90 percent of the human population has been exposed to toxoplasmosis some of them are carriers of the infection some of them only have antibodies for it and some of them have full-blown toxoplasmosis whether they know it or not it's very dangerous for for new you know babies in the womb it can anyway the thing about toxoplasmosis that's most interesting about a parasitic virus is that it is a virus that actually changes the behavior of the host. In cats, it doesn't seem to do much. When mice get in contact with cat feces and they catch toxoplasmosis, mice become not afraid of cats. Let me say this again. When mice become infected, infected with toxoplasmosis, they lose their fear of cats, okay? This is a virus that cats carry, and when mice catch it, they become no longer afraid of cats, and then the cats can catch the mice easier? I don't know. They found, by studying human populations of toxoplasmosis, that in males, toxoplasmosis has a tendency to make males less uh, dominant, less outgoing, sexually in other words and it does the opposite to women it makes women much more outgoing much more sexually aggressive uh, it almost role reverses the male female thing now 
we don't know why. Okay, there's my story about a symbiotic, uh, parasitic organism that changes the behavior of the host. Now let me refer back to what I was talking about, the little red eyes, the creatures that were in my bloodstream, lots of them. I, I mean, I, I knew it, I was fully aware of it. I lost 35 pounds in two weeks, okay? I was gone, I looked like I was dying. Uh, I was weak, I could barely walk, I was throwing up a lot. I had these things in every vein, and I said, you know, these bugs are in me, they are of me, and they are me. I am them, and they are me. I, I, it was obvious. And the weirdest thing about it is that I believed that these insects or creatures or beings, whatever they were that were inside of me with these two little red eyes glowing through the veins, that they were helping me in some way and that I loved them. Um, very strange, uh, strange idea. But the thing that is, one time I tried to stab one with a needle and I bent the needle trying to stab it my vein. Uh, I did this a few times. I bent a few needles, and then another time I bent, I stuck it in, and I hit one at the right place, and it went, and it blew up into a big ball in my arm, and I didn't do that again. Um, this was very early on in the in the craziness when this happened, and and so we had an appointment with this uh, famous New York City. Uh, housing attorney because we were in court with the landlord who was torturing us and we weren't paying. Um, this meeting occurred in a building right across the street from the, the plaza where the CIA and the FBI and all those people are. Anyway, um, we were on our way down there having stayed in a hotel the night before because all this stuff was shooting out of our heads and they had driven us out of the room with the bugs and the, we went to the emergency room. We didn't want to go back. Uh, literally, we had plastic bags that were being shredded as we carried them because so much stuff was jumping off of us, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, we were out that day, and, and the appointment is later, and, and, and Pedro's like, I don't know if I want to go. It might be a trap. And I'm like, it's a housing lawyer. Come on. So we, we go on our way down there, and on our way down there, we realize we're being followed by government-looking people, you know, like Fed-looking people. And I'm like terrified. I don't know why I was so scared, but I'm afraid of this, you know, and there's like 20 of them or something, and they're following me, so I put up with the thing out of my phone, hoping they, you know, maybe they can't follow me, and they're following me, and so we do all this ducking in and out of doors, and sure enough, they, they, they're they following us. Um, so we get to the place, and, and we go, and I'm waiting for the elevator, and there's this black woman in her trench coat, you know, looking all FBI-like, and the elevator comes, and I say, no, you go ahead, and she goes up, and we're downstairs and the elevator comes and we go up and she's in the lawyer's office waiting for us with like three or four or five of these other fed looking types and she says you know okay here you are go to the desk i've done my job and inside in the back room behind the closed door i can hear the guy talking to some other guy about how exciting his job is and now oh, he gets to do all these things and, and you know i didn't catch where they were from but they probably claimed they were from Homeland Security or whatever other agency. I don't know what agency deals with this craziness. Anyway, you know, they did their mumbo jumbo and the lady says, okay, we're not going to meet in here. We're going to take you upstairs to a conference room on the whatever floor. And we said, okay, we go up to the conference room and, and we tell the lady, look, she says, okay, there's a $200 fee. And we say, well, could you ask him if he would, you know, maybe if he comes and listens to our story, we have a really incredible story that probably nobody in the annals of housing court has ever heard, and it's possible he may want to take this case on a pro bono basis. Could you ask him? And she goes back and asks him, and she says, no, he doesn't want to do that. And so we're like, all right, and Pedro's upset, crying. And so I said, okay, fine, let's pay him the money. And she goes back, and she says, no, he doesn't even want to talk to you now. And Pedro's crying, and I'm like, oh, and the lady says, okay, you can see yourselves out, and she leaves. And, and I'm like, I'm sorry, maybe we should have paid the money, no, 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 no. And we're like, well, what are we going to do now? You know, and we say, fuck it, let's just stay here in this conference room. And if somebody throws us out, we'll leave, and if not, we're going to stay here. 